I am Crystal Joy and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am an actress, writer, and founder of Blue Room Productions. I post vlogs, behind the scenes commentary on my projects, and my films. But before this video was over, make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and the bell button to stay up to date. So in last week's video was part one of my experience living in Johannesburg, South Africa for three months. And if you have not watched it yet, I would hide. <laughs> If you have not watched that video yet, I would highly suggest you stop this video and go back and watch it. This video will make a lot more sense once you watch that one. With South Africa, there are so many places that you can visit while you're there. There's Durban, Cape Town, Pumalanga, Port Elizabeth, Lesotho, Swaziland. I know they changed their name to something else that I can't remember right now. Limpopo, there's so many different places to visit. I went to Cape Town, Pumalanga, and Durban. And let me tell you, there's so much to talk about with these places. So let's start with Cape Town. Cape Town is really beautiful. gorgeous scenery and there's so much to see and take in and everything about it is just very refreshing and I really enjoyed driving along the coast and experiencing all that fresh air and the water and the mountains. It is much different than Johannesburg. Johannesburg is more of a young city whereas Cape Town you have people a little bit older it's a popular place, but it's, it's, it's not as young. The party scene in Cape Town, it wasn't the same. I had a lot more fun as far as partying goes in Josie, but it's cool though, because I partied so much, I didn't really care about partying that much. I did go to, to one club, but I wasn't really feeling it when I went. The people are very friendly. There's nothing not to love about Cape Town, except for that racial divide that's the only thing that really bothered me was not seeing a lot of black people take up spaces in certain parts of Cape Town because white people occupy those spaces I didn't see a ton of black people in particular areas and it's something that I started to learn about when I was in South Africa but a lot of the nicer luxury places were occupied by white people. A majority of the black people were settled in one particular area. And I thought it was interesting. I didn't realize how segregated or divided South Africa was until I actually went there and saw it for myself. <laughs> Durban. Ooh. Durban was fun and it was hot as hell. <laughs>
What was interesting about Durban was when I went on my hike, my tour guide had really interesting opinions about Nelson Mandela. And it wasn't the first time I heard a South African talk about Nelson in a way that wasn't so polite. So here in the States, Nelson Mandela is regarded as a hero, an angel, a fighter, you know, on the same level as Martin Luther King. My tour guide talked very candidly about his distaste for Nelson Mandela and how he did not look out for his people because of the land inequality there. And a lot of black South Africans are without any land. And I understood where he was coming from because there was one particular point where we were walking and you look over and you see these steep, like, mountains and all you see is green and it is beautiful and I look behind me and there's a house there and I'm thinking this is someone's backyard wow and my tour guide was like he's white and I look and he was and that's honestly a lot of what I saw I saw a lot of white people owning the land there and it's not just a little bit, it's a lot. I'm not a genius about this, so I won't go into too much detail. A lot of South Africans feel as though he didn't do what he was supposed to do. And black people don't really own anything. And if you do, you're a politician or you're in something of that magnitude. When you're a politician, you're not for the people, you're for yourself or for your colleagues. And so I, I, I can under, I understood where they were coming from. There was definitely um, some load shedding when I was there. So when load shedding happens, it happens in segments or it happens in like subdivisions, I guess you can say. And so in my area where I was staying, there was load shedding. And so some things weren't open because of it. There was a Geico in the house with me. And I'm not gonna lie, I don't like anything that crawls. I don't. So I had a hard time sleeping. <laughs> I was scared. Don't judge me. <laughs>
yes massa, sorry massa type of tone. And I immediately became upset because I did not like the way the conversation was going. The driver was upset because he was being asked to show his you know, proof of ID and all this kind of stuff. And the guy's like, listen, I'm just doing my job, that's it. I took note, I didn't say anything, but I took note. This is, how, this is the entrance to where I'm staying at. This is the entrance, and then it leads to the back of yard which I'll quickly show you so this is her backyard lady she was very sweet she met me outside and took me downstairs because it was two floors to the house the first floor she stood on the second floor were where all the guests stayed as I'm walking downstairs <laughs> as I'm walking downstairs I'm greeted by a maid she was black super sweet asked if she could take my bags I said nope it's okay I got it I'm good I see another maid. She was black. She asked if she could take my bags. Nope, I'm all good. I got it. I promise. You're I'm just fine. Then I so happen to look outside and I see this dude. He's like, he's the gardener. Black. Then I get to my room. The room is huge, tall windows, high ceilings, beautiful view outside. I look outside, I see another gardener. He's black. And I'm thinking to myself, Am I on the set of Get Out? Because this is weird. It was, I, I, it was the most eerie feeling I've ever had. Every maid, every worker in that house was black. The owner of the house was white. <sighs> the people there were so friendly, so kind. Everyone, white and black, they were so nice to me. And probably because I was a foreigner, I was a tourist. I, I get that, but they were all, regardless, very nice, and they showed me great hospitality and were extremely welcoming. It's just what I saw that surprised me.
river is thousands and thousands of feet. Like, you don't want to fall down that cliff. I'll just put it that way. You won't make it. Okay? You will not be alive. My tour guide was nice enough to take some photos of me. So I took some of him. I put my phone on a rock. As I'm taking the picture, I see my phone and my peripheral vision go down. And I look over and I see it hit one rock and then another rock and then another rock, but it stops. My tour guide went and got my phone. He was safe, he was okay. It wasn't cracked, I got it back, but man, that was a scary feeling. One of the things that I appreciated was my tour guide, and he went into details about his experiences living in Pumalanga. And he talked about how his family, his dad, his grandparents, you know, down the line, they were actually displaced. Because as you're driving, you're seeing all these homes, these standalone homes, and it's like this community. And he told me how a lot of those homes, all of those homes were built by hand by, by black people who were displaced. In those areas, there, there's no electricity, there's no running water. And that was done on purpose. The next day, I went to Kruger National Park. And if you don't know about Kruger National Park, it is a safari that gets you really close to the wildlife there. It's not a zoo. driving for a little while and hadn't seen any animals. I ended up nodding off and I had my phone in my lap and I woke up because I heard something fall. Look down, my phone is not there. So I'm looking all over the truck, hoping it's on the truck. After about 10 minutes of driving, the driver stops and turns around and we're driving and we're driving and there it is, face down on the path. He gets out and before he even gives me my phone, I knew it was bad news. He grabs the phone and he goes, <sighs> and he hands it back to me. My phone is shattered, shattered. So I thought to myself, well, there goes my good luck. <laughs> because the day before it was falling down Blood River Canyon, but this time it could not be saved. I learned to take the good with the bad not everything is always going to work out the way you want it to work out. Yes, I could have let these little moments that happened that didn't go in my favor, the load shedding, the cell phone, you know, all those things could have soured my trip, but there's no point in that. So you just have to take the good with the bad and, and continue enjoying yourself. You know, things are gonna happen and not everything will always go in your favor.
Africa is a place that I love. I love and I cannot wait to share more with you and I can't wait to take you on more journeys through Africa and to Africa. So thank you guys so much for tuning into today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please do not forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell button below to stay up to date. And I will see you next week. Thank you.